Hello and welcome to the SU TV show. Sheffield United back in action on Tuesday night as they make the trip to Selhurst Park to take on Crystal Palace. Carl and I will be looking ahead to that game in a few moments' time. But first of all, we're going to start by hearing one of Sheffield United's latest signings. Goalkeeper Ivo Gerbic has been telling us about his move to Bramall Lane. Eva, our first move to England. What attracted you to this challenge at Sheffield United? Oh, it's good. First impression is very good. Thanks everybody for the warm welcome. Uh, I'm really happy. Uh, it's it's big dream for every player to come in a Premier League. Uh, I'm really happy to join the, to Sheffield United. And first impression is is very good. I'm I'm so excited, and I really want to soon as possible to join the team. And anything must. You've been in Madrid since 2020. I know you had a, a loan spell at Lille in that time as well. So, did you think it was now time for a fresh challenge? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the best challenge, I think. It's, I'm goalkeeper. It's an uh, amazing experience, I hope. And will be so fun with, uh, with our fans, with, uh, with all, all the people, all the group, all the players. And I'm really, really excited. And and I want to play as soon as possible to, to play first match. You're on the bench for Atletico on yeah. Monday night. It's only a few days down the line and now you're in Sheffield. So things have happened pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty quickly. But, uh, but I was thinking about Sheffield on Monday or Monday on my last game for, uh, for Atleti. Uh, I was thinking a lot and I, I, I arrived here uh, ready with, uh, with my first impression to, to Sheffield and ready to, to help the team. And I hope to to win to win every 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 next game. You've been at the training ground today at Shirecliffe. We're now yeah. at Bramall Lane. You seem pretty happy with what you've seen so far. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, training ground is uh, very important for me because it's uh, one place where we prepared for the for the every game, and this is this is very important for the team and for me. And uh, I hope we'll be prepared every 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 training session very good, and I hope we can uh, prepare our heads for the win. So there we are, Carl. A new signing in the building. Um, your thoughts on Ivo Gerbic coming? Yeah, re really positive. Um, you don't get to Atletico Madrid without being a good player, um, uh, and he's got everything. You, you want from a kid, he's got massive stature, um, he's got good pedigree, obviously well represented at younger levels in, uh, in the national team. And, you know, it's competition which, which the squad thrives from. He's been understudy to Jan Oblak, so he's been learning off one of the best, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah um, you, you're picking stuff up every day watching one of the best, aren't you? And he will have had great coaches and he's coming here. As he said, he's, he's coming here to try and get in the team and play and, and make a big impact for us. And did you feel Wes needed that bit of competition as well? Um, obviously, Wes has had a, a great two seasons. He, he really has. He got save of the month last month. You know, he's having big moments in games. Um, every position can always have competition. I did feel there's been a, a little bit of uh, an uncertainty at times in, in games um, and a nervousness, but... You know, this this will propel him. You know, he he'll step up to to face the competition, and it's the best man win. We need the best players in each position, and if Gerbich comes and makes the position his own by his performances, you know, Wes will have to to fight. So it's only going to spur the team forward, um, and I feel it definitely addresses you know, one of the small issues that we we've, we've been having in recent weeks. And Diego Simeone's sides are notoriously defensively strong. You know, he's in the business of keeping things tight at the back with a level of aggression as well. Do you think Gerbic will bring that to this defence here? You know, you'll not be frightened about organising people and moving people around, will he? Well, certainly, I, I hope he brings that. Um, and yes, Atletico Madrid, are, they're built from the back and they're, they're, they're very disciplined and you don't have the foundation building block as a weak link, do you? So the fact that he's been at Atletico Madrid, he was signed, um, it, it means he, he is of the right ilk that we, we're after. Um, I hope with six foot five stature, he's gonna be all shouting people around. If he shouts me in the stand, <laughs> I'll probably change seat at his size. Um, 
but no, it's, it's, it's only a plus. And, you know, if you look to when the Blades were on the edge of being in um, European football under Chris under the first time, the defence was, was remarkable. You had Henderson, who was keeping us in games. You know, he was making big saves at big times, keeping the team in, in the game. And then the team were building from it and, and going on and stealing a, a win or taking a win. Um, and that is a key area. You need the, the strength at the back and the reliability. And hopefully this, this will improve that position. This, to me, looks like a bit of a coup, actually, because when you talk about him obviously he's been playing at Atletico Madrid he's been in Ligue 1 in France he's been to a World Cup he's played in the Champions League bearing all that in mind it looks like a really big signing it here. really does but you know I'm, I'm gonna we, we've had uh, keep your pound of drive I've now. had a, a top international keeper sign for us before which gave me heart palpitations last season so um or the season before so no I, I, I'm really excited about this and I really hope it really improves that, that position for us. We've seen another new face as well, um, a young player by the name of Sam Curtis, who's really, really highly rated. He's been linked with some big clubs. Thoughts on that arrival? It's really exciting. Um, and the fact we've heard about it over a number of weeks that it's been in, in the offing and for us to still manage to get the signing, because as you say, a lot of big clubs big, were after him. I've heard that Man City had plotted a future for him, you know, that they wanted to sign him and loan him. And, you know, this is a player that's highly thought of. Um, and it, doesn't it make it interesting in our right back position now? You've You've got three, two, two of our best players in that position and now an upcoming youngster as well. Really, really good. This is what you need, the competition through the team and in, in each position. And that's been one of the marked things that we've had the last couple of the competition for in each position. It, it's really there now. I suspect Keith Andrews might have played a bit of a role in persuading Sam to come here as well. What do you think? Well, he's very persuasive. Yeah, he doesn't speak, you know, Keith, Keith keeps his words minimal, but <laughs> when he speaks, he speaks with authority and People listen, and he, you know, he's well respected in the game, and I, I, I expect he he was heavily involved in this. And what's it say about Sheffield United's reputation within the game for developing young players as well? Chris has been prepared to put youngsters in. Paul, before him, was prepared to put youngsters in. What what does that say about Sheffield United's standing within the game in that well, regard? Well, lots, and I think I mentioned this at the start of the season. McAtee wanting to come back, I think, will have influenced a, a lot of people outside the club that it wasn't an easy option for him to come back here when we weren't expecting to, to be on top of all the games. He's an attacking player who thrives when you're on top. But he knew what he was coming into and he still wanted to come and he's thrived. So young players looking at that, a, a top starlet from Man City, has been here and wanted to come back. They must have something about them. You've got all the young players who keep coming through. We've had Morgan Gibbs-White here. We've had Illiman and Jai. You've got Andre Brooks coming through. The, the, the number of young players coming through. The manager, he, he demands a lot from his players, but he's willing to give them a chance and he backs them. And I, I, It must be an exciting dressing room to be in because the young lads, are they're, they're full of enthusiasm and skill and the manager's right behind them. And Ben Briot and Diaz, we shouldn't forget either who's also come through the door during this January transfer window he's made a really good start hasn't he to his career yeah his first game away at Gillingham he, he's given assists his home his home debut first 45 minutes I thought were brilliant um he, he's a monster in physical stature he's really huge but he doesn't have to work hard you know um him playing out wide I played that position He's really intelligent. He makes really intelligent runs. He works hard. But what really impressed me was his defensive qualities. He doesn't mm. switch off. Um, he gets back into position quickly, even though he wants to score goals. And we saw, you know, uh, his, his first home goal. He, he is a goal scorer, but he doesn't forget about his defensive responsibilities, his integration with the team. He, he's been playing blind balls. He must be working so hard on the pattern of play and listening to the manager. And the other players are speaking highly of him. So it's looking at, a, a, you know, early, early days, but it looks a really good acquisition. It's got to be difficult, though, hasn't it, from his point of view, coming into a team halfway through the season and, as you say, trying to figure out patterns of play, trying to establish relationships how hard is it when you're a new player coming into the club into a group that's already been playing for half a season yeah it is and, and also uh, another thing to think goal scorers they they want to play in a team where they're going to get chances so 
the fact he's come, we're, we're, we're now on the bottom of the table, but he was still willing to come, believing he must have seen videotapes, knows the players, knows how Chris likes to play, and thought, you know what, I'm still going to get chances. If I, if I stick to the plan and I work hard, I'm going to get my chances and it's down to me to score. You know, it's a big plus and, you know, he, he's taken the gamble and we've taken the gamble on him and it, it, so far it's looking a really good move. Yes, pleasing to see some new faces in the squad. Right, let's look ahead to the game at Crystal Palace then with Gus Harmer. Gus, thanks for joining us. First of all, has the Premier League been everything you thought it would be and hoped it would be? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think we, for me personally, I thought it was way quicker than, than the Championship, um, more physical. And I always look like every mistake is is a can be a goal. And for so far, if you see the games, the other games, you see our games, like we we are very sharp in the counter attacks as well. Um, I think everything what I thought about the game is, is actually true. Was there ever a moment like in the early games when you first came in and thought, this is really, really tough? Um, no, I actually didn't. I actually didn't. The first thought I had when we played Man City at home is like, oh, yeah, that's Man City. We have to play them now. Normally, like you see them on TV or you see them, well, people talk about them about FIFA and stuff yeah. like that. And then I, I never thought really about it. And then now, for the first time, I was actually thinking about, yeah, we're playing against Man City, so we have to go for it. Have you had to adapt your game in any way to try and cope with football at this level? Um, no, I, I don't think so. And that's not being big headed or anything, but I think more like I brought here for the game I play. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to change that, you know what I mean? So I think the way I want to play is the way how the club wants to play and that, that counts for everyone. So everybody got brought in for their qualities and for their creativities and that's, that's me as well. So I don't want to change anything. Uh, I just want to be me and the best version of me. It is still a big jump though, isn't it, from the Championship to the Premier League. What are the differences that you notice from playing opposing teams obviously it's going to be quicker yeah do you find that you have less or more time on I the think ball? I think personally we got more time on the ball it's what I said every mistake is a goal that's the, I yeah. think that's the biggest difference but I think you've got more time on the ball now everybody's giving you a high pressure some teams are just sitting in waiting for the counter attack but then you have to be like so quick with with the ball when when the pressure is there um, and you have to be so sharp to to get out of the counter attack because if you, if you miss hit your pass then in like five seconds they, be, they can be at your goal. And how are you finding Sheffield? How have you settled? Good. I've got a house. Um, everything is fine. My little one is here. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm doing well. Everything is sorted. Because so. we were talking off camera about how you relax away from the rigours of everyday football. Yeah. H how do you chill out? What do you like to do? I don't have a choice. I come home and the first thing my little one is saying is like, Daddy, let's play football. So <laughs> the first thing I do when I play, come home is playing football for So you can't escape it then? I can't escape. I can't escape. He's obsessed with it. Um, but uh, for the rest, we just, yeah, enjoy it. Go to the soft play, doing some funny things with, with each other. So, yeah, it's good. Um, and for the rest, just relaxing, watching some TV, playing on the PlayStation. But... Do, do you consume a lot of football away from here? Because some players like to go, you know, leave the football behind. Others, you know, they're, they're watching it, they're reading about it all the time. What oh, do you like? No, not at all. No, no I, don't, I don't watch it, I don't read it. I don't so look, if there's a game on tonight, if there's a game on tonight, let's just say, I don't know, a Premier League game or a, or a, a Europa Champions League game, you're not necessarily no, no. If you tell me taking yesterday, hold of the TV. If you tell me tomorrow what game was on today, I was like, oh, really? I, I would literally generally have no clue. Right. No, no clue. I, I just don't watch it. I um, I'm busy every day with it, of course. Here, yeah. And then when I come home, I just don't see the point for it. I don't. Uh, well, you you learn, of course. Don't get me wrong, but we have meetings here. You learn the opponents and you learn from other players. And sometimes you see clips clips on YouTube and stuff like that. But I I generally never watch football. You do though. Still watch Coventry. I do. But, who have yeah. a special place in your heart for obvious reasons. Yeah. Which I think is yeah. really nice, actually, that you still go back and monitor their progress. I think, yeah, I think that they, they, they have been wonderful to me and they brought me to, 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 to the Blades, of course, don't, don't get me wrong. So, yeah, of course, I have a special place in my heart and it will always be. But 
now I'm here and when I'm off, I always want to try to go back to, to see my friends who live there, of course. Yeah. Uh, I made, made some friends there um, and from the teammates as well to support still the team and support the, the, the club there. Um, but yeah, um, that, that's, the only re that's the only club I watch football, to be honest. And they're going really well at the moment, aren't they? They're flying, the yeah, they're flying. They're doing, they're doing really well. They, um, they, beat, they beat Sheffield Wednesday last week, so that's always a bit extra good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a blades man, so it, you were happy with that. Thanks for that, Gus. Thanks, yeah. thanks for outing me. Uh, although people probably knew anyway. Uh, I was probably deluding myself. In terms, <laughs> in terms of, of Sheffield United and, and where you are now, it's a tough spot, of course it is. It's a tough league. Um, what are your hopes going forward from here now in the in the season that remains? Um, well, you hope for surviving, of course. But I think the way we play now is is, is a bit different, um, and I think it's on our own ends still. We we just have to make sure we win some, as much as points we can in in, in the home games and <clears throat> get as much points in away games as possible. Uh, I would say a home is always easier than away, in my personal opinion. But then um, I think I think it's up to us. I think if we work hard for each other, if we work um, hard to get the ball, if we fight for each other, like we did last week when, when we were 2-1 down in the last minute and Oli McBurney scored the historical last-minute <laughs> goal in the Premier League ever, I think, that, that, I think that's a quality. Um, some people will say like, it's lucky, but I think it's a quality if you still believe in it. Um, and and so when Oli Norwood scored the penalty as well in the last last minutes, I think it's a quality from us to keep going to till the last seconds, till the last whistle's blown. I think um, if we keep doing that, then I think we'll be all right. How's it been working with Chris? Good, old school. Yeah, um, I'm a bit used to it because of Mark Robbins, to be honest. But I like I like the way how he. Um, how he sets the training, how he sets the tone um, with the, all the assistants, of course, doing a really good job. So, yeah. I, I and you've got a couple of goals in the Premier League. I mean, I, I failed to ask you what it was like for you to score your first Premier League goal. And obviously you got another one yeah. after that. That yeah, must be the, really the special first goal for you. you couldn't believe, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. First goal, I couldn't believe it because it's the first game in. The team barely know you, only from playing against you, of course. But... Is is um, it's different because you you come in a new team. Well, like I said no one knows you, and you score as a banger, and everybody runs into you. And you're like, oh, how do I celebrate? What do I do? And then, of course, we lost on last minutes. Uh, we lost, but then you're still kind of happy because you scored. You're you're off the mark. Um, but yeah, the only feeling I got there was, there was I was buzzing for the goal. But then at the same time, you're like, oh, we lost the game. So that's a bit. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I want to ask you about international football because it's an interesting backstory yours. Born in Brazil, but raised in the Netherlands. Yeah. Is, is there a chance that, you know, you, you could represent the Netherlands going I forward? I can. I have a or, Dutch. Or, Braz or, yeah. or Brazil. I mean, obviously, you know, Brazil is an incredible <laughs> national team. Yeah. But you must have designs on playing yeah, international football. Of course football. you have dreams. And my dream is to play for the Dutch squad then. Uh, to be honest, because I lived my whole life there. And there's but, no better place to be playing your football than in the Premier League if people are going to sit up and take notice, right? Yeah, you would you would assume so. Yeah, um, but it's not up to me. I try to do my best, and then it's to the well, we call the bonds coach to to the, the the gaffer from the Dutch squad to to get me on the list. But it's it's what they want, of course, and it's what they need mm -hmm. um, with the players they already know, of course. But what you say, I think the Premier League is the best league in the world. Um, so I'm trying my best to 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 get in that squad, but um, we will see what the time says. Any noises? Any any rumours that people nothing, might have been nothing keeping yet. an eye on no, you? Nothing yet. No. Well, it'll come. Still up, look sure. at my phone. Still it's, don't get it. It's, it's got to come, Gus. <laughs> it's got to come. Hopefully um, one day. Crystal Palace. Um, they're not in a great run themselves at the moment. Tough place to go. Selhurst Park. I've been a few times. I haven't. You haven't. It's never my played first Premier League year. Yeah. So, so, so never played there. What are you expecting from Crystal Palace? You'll have seen bits and pieces of them, of course. Yeah, we did. We did saw some pieces. And, of course, I've seen them playing the first game I came to, yeah. to Sheffield United. I was, um, I was watching in the stands and they, they have really quality players. 
I think with e EZ, if I say it right. Eze. 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 Actually, Eze. Actually, to be correct, Eze. Eze. Yeah. I think he's an amazing player. He's very dangerous, but they all are. Uh, they're all very good. So, of course, we, we are, what, what I said, like, we if we work as a team, we work hard. We have we have all the power and all the possibilities to, to get a point there if, if it's not free. But we have to be strict to each other and work the work plan and the game plan, what we want to do. So, um, what I expect is, if I'd be brave to say, minimum point. But you, you've shown signs, haven't you, since the manager's come in, you've picked up some valuable points along the way. But this is nothing against the previous manager who did a wonderful job here. But there is more of a competitive edge to this team now. Obviously, he's come in with his own ideas, the new manager. He's got you playing slightly differently. Has the belief grown since he's walked through the door a little bit, would you say? Yeah, of course. Like, it's like... I think when a new manager comes in, everything changed, and it's not what you said. It's nothing to do with the old manager. It's just have to do something with the new manager who yeah. is giving you different spirits and different opinion and different uh, ideas. And then it's always it's always a gamble if it will work. Of course, with a new gaffer, uh, it has to suit the players, has to suit the staff, has to suit the fans. Of course, so I think it's always a, a risky, but it, it went well so far. We got some what you said, valuable points. Uh, and now we have to keep going and get our points in. It's been lovely to talk to you, thank you. I'm going to let you go and get back to your little one who's probably waiting to play football. You already called me. You <laughs> already, yeah. yeah, you did. <laughs> so, Cheers. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Why Sheffield United? Because, uh, of course, it's a great team uh, with history, but we all know that it's not in a good situation, but still you, you decided to, to go to Sheffield. Yeah, for me... Um, Obviously, speaking to the to the gaffer, and I know the players. I know some of the players here. I've played against Sheff Sheffield United four or five times. I know what they're about. Yeah. Uh, for me, as soon as it, it came up, I was 100% uh, in. You know, uh, it's, it's a great club, great atmosphere, um, yeah. and also I feel like um, I get more more opportunity to to be involved in the games, whether that's coming on off the bench or starting. So. Uh, so no, for me, this next six months, I need to to get back in the goals, scoring assists, having good performances, yeah. and uh, and that's why I chose uh, Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you talked about goals. Uh, first, uh, first game in Sheffield United, and first goal, your Premier League debut. How did that feel? Because I suppose that that is just amazing for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's great, you know. It's all. Uh, ever dreamt of when coming up as a young lad playing football so uh, no. so no uh, really happy uh, my family were over the moon um, obviously to, to start in the Premier League and then to score also was was was, was great so uh, so no really really exciting times and uh, happy to, to get off the mark in, in the first game so it was good so that's the proof that uh one similar round where just that you need to adapt because the goal is there and you showed it in your first game. Yeah, obviously it's football, you know. Uh, it's, it's it's football. Sometimes it doesn't go for you, but I, I never stop. I never stop believing that I can score goals and affect games. So sometimes that's just what it is. I think every attacking player goes through it sometimes. But uh, but no, happy to to score a goal in my first game for Sheffield United. So that's been great, yeah. Uh, ben, uh, how can the Premier League uh, help you uh, in terms of your national team with Chile? You are a star there, everyone's talking about you, important player there. How, how important is it for you to get those, that rhythm and, and maybe inside of the next Copa America? No, the, well, I think, I think the, the Premier League is the best, uh, best league in the world, so to challenge myself, uh, to be getting opportunities to play, to, to play against some great uh, players. I think that's uh, a no-brainer, you know, that's just only going to help me out uh, to learn more. And, and for me here, the coaching staff and everyone in, in involved with Sheffield United, the detail that goes into on and off the pitch, I think I'll learn a lot. And also going back to Villarreal, I also learned a lot there, even though I wasn't playing much or scoring goals or yeah. stuff like this, I still learned a lot about uh, different things, you know. So everything's just a learning curve and um, and trying to get better. So let's talk Crystal Palace, Carl. Sheffield United back in Premier League action. Thoughts on this, first and foremost? Yes, yeah, a, a really exciting tie, a tough tie. 
Um, and their manager's under a lot of pressure. You know, we played them on the opening day. Um, we were unfortunate um, to lose. Uh, they've got some some really exciting players, um, which are, it's going to be it's going to be tricky. But and they've also had a, a free weekend. You know, they haven't had any cup football. They'll be able to focus on us and to have fresh legs. But um, the plus that we have is the options we have. You know, the manager's shown that he can rotate, and we've got lots of options. So, and what was really exciting from the West Ham match was we, we can, we've got different ways of approaching games. You can go direct with Asula up top. Half time, we changed it. McBurney came in, and we played a different way with the wide people giving us the, the pace in behind. So, it's going to be tricky, Palace. It's going to be hard for them to predict how we're going to come at them um, because we've got so many options. So, it, it is exciting. Obviously, we played them earlier in the season, opening weekend, wasn't it? Um, a game that didn't deserve to lose. No, we, we got our first side uh, sites of Premiership, you know, the bias when they, um, I think what I'm, I think it was their striker um, got fouled and the referee picked him up and patted him on the bum and, and let him go away. We got our first glimpse that things might be a little bit tricky um, in that game. What about Roy Hodgson? You know, he's still going at the age that he is, and that's testament to the guy, really. Uh, did a wonderful job last season. The football they played was great. Different this time around. But them as a club as well, um, are they a club that a lot of teams coming up to the Premier League should be aspiring to be like? Crystal Palace fans not happy with where they are in the table, but when you look at how they've managed to establish themselves in the Premier League. They've been up. They, they must have amassed over a billion pounds from... Premiership yeah. money, so that is the blueprint. They've, their training facilities are incredible. Um, they've invested throughout the club, and they're stuck in there. And they keep sticking in there. It seems there's a bit of, you know, they're disgruntled now. The fans because they want to kick on. They want a bit more now instead of it just being churning over the money, the money, the money. They want more. So if we can get at them, you know the fan. You know it's a really hostile place to go. The the Crystal Palace fans make it very hostile. But you just think if we can get at them and we can subdue them for the first 20 minutes, there's other things going on, and the atmosphere in that ground could change really quickly. Are there any players in particular of theirs that concern you? There's a lot. There's a lot. There. Eze, I think, yeah. is one of the best in the Premiership. You know, he, he's doing so well. He, he's trying to take on teams on his own because he is that good. Um, but we've seen, we've got players of our own, young players in the team that um, are there to counter and to impose themselves. Andre Brooks is, is just being an absolute shining light. So we're talking about Eze being wonderful. I, I like our Andre Brooks just as much. You brought it up. Um, I was going to ask you about Andre Brooks. He's a big, big favourite of mine. Uh, he started every game under Chris Wilder since he walked through the door. I mean, this, this kid just shows no fear. Bit of skill in that West Ham game in particular. Everyone will know the bit I'm talking about where he skips by a couple yeah, on the, the left-hand side. Again. Yeah, it was Maybe brilliant. Make silly noises on commentary. It was brilliant, but, you know, you kind of take it for granted, I think, sometimes watching as a fan, a teenager playing in the Premier League. You know, this is this is a massive, massive deal for Andre Brooks, but he's just gone with it. He just takes everything in his stride. Yeah, and it? it's not just the flair. The flair has come in the last couple of games. We've seen him in under 23s turn and cut in and put the ball in the top corner from 35 yards. He has the flair to replicate that on the Premiership. is It's completely different. What's really impressed me is how mature he's been. That he's doing the flair, but he's doing the hard bits. He's not getting carried away. His discipline chasing back, his sticking to formation. The, the match against Liverpool, he was man-marking one of their most creative midfielders and he stuck to the task and was one. Everything. The, the key now is he's, he's come through this wonderful academy is to keep working now and keep because there's no limit to what he can do. If he keeps working, he's got the right people around him, he looks as good as anything. Great to see him sign a new contract recently as well, but he's living the dream. Sheffield lad, which all fans want to see. They want to see some homegrown players. But we've signed, we've signed Hackford as well. Yeah. You know, the, the homegrown players are coming through, the academy players, our blasters come back now to try and get him back and fit. And, you know, it, the youth, it's, it's a re really exciting place, isn't it? Well, so we were yeah. talking about Palace and we've just gone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so a prediction on Palace. I mean, what, what can Sheffield United take from the West Ham game, the last Premier League game down to Selhurst, do you think, that will serve them well down there? Well, the, the fact that we should have got the three points. I think everyone were delighted we ended up with a point. 
but after it all settled and you thought about the, the game as a whole, you were disappointed that they didn't get the three points because the performance deserved it. And that's what they've got to take forward is that the performances are building. They're looking comfortable in games. They're in each match they've been in this in since Chris has taken over. They've, they've always been a good part in it. They're not just there. Um, and Crystal Palace are, they're, they're not miles above us, are they? And then uh, in players, they, our boys must be confident and go in there and aim for the three points. Carl, thank you. That's as far as we go this week. We'll be back next week as we preview the game against Aston Villa. But if you want more from the SU TV show, you can listen right now to the SU TV podcast show, which is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Take care and we'll see you next time.